the intersectionality of blogging. We're going to find out what that means, all of us here in the next 45 minutes. <clears throat> but let me just say this. My presentation is going to take a, a couple turns. First, we're going to get to know who I am, okay, as the speaker here. Then we're going to talk about um, how I came to know what blogging is and my, my uh, relationship with it. And then we're going to get to know exactly, I guess, more of the clinical realm. It's going to take a clinical turn. And we're going to get to know how I utilize blogging and how we can all utilize blogging to really treat ourselves as people, as individuals, like self-CBT, we'll get into that. Uh, but really how we can use this as a new treatment for mental health and how that works. So, without further ado, All right, so I wear a few hats back in the United States. Um, I am a licensed clinical social worker. I'm not 100% sure in this country how social work operates in terms of licensing and regulations, but I know in the United States, we, we become master social workers when we go to graduate school, and then uh, we become licensed, when we take an exam, and then after years of practice, we become licensed clinical social workers, if that's the avenue you wanna take. So aside from being a licensed clinical social worker and clinician, I'm an advocate and ally for people with mental health disorders and So above all, I'm a blogger. Find right out why. And blogging really for me isn't just about disabling stigma and um, you know talking about Netflix better better ethical practices, but it's really about how to use it as a therapy. And this presentation will talk about how to measure that. So, my point of departure into blogging. I was at a friend's house, okay? I was sitting down, it was like a Friday night. We were just sitting there talking, eating pizza. And I'm like, ah. I have a lot, I, my, my, my thoughts were heavy at that moment. Okay, I just made a Facebook post and sorry, it's technology. Did you set the space bar? Okay. So I was just having a casual conversation and it's feeling extremely <laughs> ambivalent about this Facebook post. I'm gonna talk about that. Why? Okay. So this Facebook post was basically me splattering my thoughts. What do they call that when you just get out there and start talking and just a rant? What a, a rant, it was a rant, it was a crazy rant. And I was like, ah, I'm gonna change the system altogether. That's what I wanna do. And I got on there and started talking. That's, this here is exactly what I said. That was the post, I went back and looked it up. <laughs> and we could do that. But always believed in having a plan, a next step, call it a goal or an objective, I believe in a tomorrow that begins right now. Well, maybe that right now is right now. Because back then, it really didn't do much. I got a few likes. People were like, Max, what are you talking about? They were like, uh, Max, what is this? I got like a couple messages, Max, are you okay? Max, are you feeling all right? Like, good lord. So, that's what that was. So I was talking to my friend and like, you know, I just made that Facebook post, the one you just saw, and I'm like, I don't feel right. Because you know, you ever get nervous when you put something out there? It happens to all of us. I don't care how, how much you've spoken, where you've spoken, who you are, what you do. You get nervous sometimes about what you speak and what you put out there. I was nervous. I said, I don't know if I should have said that. I literally took out my phone. I'm like, I read it to her. I'm like, this is what I said. What do you think? Is this okay? You know, like, I don't know, it's, it's there. Should I keep it up there? Should I go back and edit? <laughs> so, what happened was, that moment when I said, you know, should I go back and edit? What should I do? It's there. That's really the moment when my blog was born. Okay, that little reflective, let's look at this, let's look at that. 
But before we go on, we're going to go back 10 years. This is that turn I talked about at the beginning of the presentation. I was an English major in upstate New York at Binghamton University. I was actively psychotic. And I'm not going to, I know as clinicians or as advocates, we don't always like to use that language. I use that language because that's how I felt about my thoughts. I wasn't happy with my thoughts. I wasn't happy with the, their clarity. I wasn't happy with what was happening to me. I didn't know what was happening to me. I was getting very sick. Let's just say that. So I was had I was had active schizophrenia symptoms. Well, I was later diagnosed with a mental severe mental health condition, and I was actively de de delusional. I was paranoid. I was all of those things. Okay, this is ten years ago. Not right now. Maybe right now. <laughs> but that was ten years ago. 